Trump issued a tweet, became a proclamation, and he shut down immigration. Did he shut down immigration, Jennifer Howard? He did not. He did not. So today we're going to talk about the proclamation, who it affects, um, give you an update on the proclamation. So last week, the White House suspending the entry into the United States. Um, so who does this affect? Right now, the proclamation, as it stands, suspends entry for anyone seeking to enter the United States as an immigrant. And this only applies to people who are outside the United States right now and are not already green card holders or don't already have a valid immigrant visa as of the effective date, which was April 23rd. Um, there's also a number of exempted categories. Uh, for example, spouses and children of US citizens. So if you have a spouse or a child who was seeking to come in on an immigrant visa, they should still be able to in most cases. Um, there's a number of other exempted categories that are available on our blog, on our website, and also that are listed on the White House's website where the original proclamation is published. Um, so do you wanna talk about who, who else it does not affect? Oh, sure. So uh, as Jennifer Howard mentioned, this is um, a proclamation that suspends um, entry for people on, uh, seeking entry on an immigrant visa. Uh, so people seeking to enter the country on a green card. It does not, however, affect people um, seeking entry on a non-immigrant visa or people who are currently in the United States on a non-immigrant visa. A non-immigrant visa uh, is a tourist visa. It's also um, it's a visa for someone who wants to be here on a temporary non-permanent basis. Um, so that would also include temporary workers. Um, often farm workers are here on temporary visas. So if you are currently in the United States and you are on a non-immigrant visa, you are still able to um, file for an extension of status. You're still able to file for adjustment of status if you're eligible. Uh, the proclamation and the suspension does not apply to you. Um, in addition to that, it also does not apply to people who are seeking um, relief under the um, various um, options for you know, refugee status, asylum, convention against torture, and withholding removal. So if you are seeking asylum um, or those other types of forms of relief, uh, this proclamation does not affect your ability to, to apply for, um, for relief. So what all this means is that the proclamation doesn't necessarily change things from where we were before the proclamation was issued due to many of the agencies already being closed, um, border restrictions, travel restrictions that Jennifer is going to talk a little bit more about. Sure. So um, as you may have already uh, been um, hearing about, uh, many immigration related agencies around the world, as well as within the United States, are, are currently closed or operating on a limited basis. So. Uh, the routine visa services at the U.S. embassies and consulates around the world, they are still restricted um, and suspended for, not, uh, for routine visa appointments. So uh, we have not received any updates as to when the consulates will be reopening, and we have not received any updates um, or guidance on how uh, the consulates will be rescheduling the visa appointments that were uh, postponed due to the, the closure. Um, travel restrictions to and from various countries around the world are still in place. The United States um, the, is still suspended, uh, continues to suspend the border entries for Canada and Mexico. And in addition to that, USCIS um, has suspended its um, in-person services to the public. Um, at its field offices, at the application support centers where people go to get their fingerprints, um, as well as at the asylum offices. This does not mean, however, that USCIS is closed and that it's not processing applications. That's not true. The agency continues to process the applications that it receives. Um, and in many cases, um, we are seeing um, very quick processing times on certain types of um, filing. So, for example, many of the cases that we filed in the beginning of March, um, February, uh, we are already receiving approval notices for those types of cases. So the agency continues to process applications. It is just not meeting with members um, of the public. It's not holding interviews for applicants. Um, and again, we don't have information as to when those 
um, appointments will be rescheduled. Initially, the agency said that it would be closed through May 3rd. Um, however, we recently received an update that it the agency has extended the closure to June 4th. So, um, and again, we don't know how the agency will go about rescheduling all of the appointments that have been missed for the last two months and whether they will be prioritizing rescheduling those interviews or making people get back in the line. Um, but hopefully we'll get some guidance on that soon. In addition, uh, the immigration courts, there are two immigration courts. Um, as you may know, there's a detained immigration court that is within a detention center. The detained docket continues to operate. That means that the immigration judges are still holding hearings for people who are in detention centers. Um, however, the non-detained docket um, is currently, um, at least in Colorado, it is currently um, closed through May 15th. Um, the Executive Office for Immigration Review um, has been updating um, the state status of the immigration courts um, on its website. We receive updates about that pretty regularly. Um, but as of now, we don't have, um, again, any additional information as to uh, whether the agency intends to reopen the court, at least in Denver, um, on May 15th. And when it does, we don't yet have information on it. When those hearings that have been postponed due to the closure will be rescheduled. But as soon as we receive guidance on that, we'll be able to share it with you. So, we do share updates on our website and uh, we try to post those as quickly as we hear updated dates as to closures, when offices are going to reopen, um, the latest news on these issues. That website is www.immigrationissues.com. That's also available on this page. Um, we just got a nice hello. <laughs> um, so thank you to everybody who's watching and we hope to continue to post updates and do lives in the future. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.